Hello everyone, Rissy Toothpick here, back again with some more Alone in the Dark. And let's get this uh, camera going and seeing what happens here. This is uh, going to be new for me. Yeah, it's bright. Is this how you travel, Ruth? Oh. The war in Europe rages on, and America is doing its part to hold back the German aggression. Ships from Boston and New Orleans arrived yesterday to bolster our gallant forces in France. These men will play a crucial role in helping our allies defend the innocent and defeat the German war machine. In trenches, they will defend themselves against the charging horde with razor-sharp ingenuity, all while planning how to advance the front with the use of artillery, machine guns, and pure American spirit. But there are more things than bullets and explosives that can cheat a man out of his God-given right to live. On the home front, a deadly influenza has claimed many lives. In New Orleans, almost a thousand souls have perished in... Oh. Let's see what we got here in objectives. It was France where John died. Maybe this meant she could save him. You can't save someone that's already dead. And if you do, it's not gonna be your fiance that you saved, it's gonna be something else. But we're in the trenches. I'll find you, John. And the crows picking on the dead bodies. What was that? Yeah, I don't think that's a gunfire. I think that's some creature. Maybe it's the blind creature again. Oh, here we go. Guy dead body. What, nothing? Yeah, he big dead. You know, there really isn't a lot in these trenches though. Just a few dead bodies here and there. And we're stuck. Okay, there's a way outside. Let's see if this is like a dead end. Nothing. We definitely have to keep an eye out for any of the collectibles because this is where they're going to spawn in at. Ooh. And now, usually, since we're in the trenches, uh, gas should be a big thing. So there should be like gas masks and whatnot. You really wouldn't want to be rolling around here without one. I don't think that's John. I'll say if it is, you've been you've been walking upon like a couple Johns recently. Big old radios they used to have. Nowadays radios can be pretty small, but back then there were these giant clunky things. Oh, here we go. Almost missed this. John. Nothing there. Oh. For a minute, I thought we wouldn't be able to get in here, but... We can, so we gotta watch out for any makeshift uh, walls. Ah! 
Now that kind of sounds like artillery. I wonder if, if her if John was like a medic or something because each one of these has like a little med pack in there. John. Oh, I heard something like the door. I guess that door opened, maybe? I'll say, I think we've become the hunted. Got all these weird noises. My goodness. A lot of random pieces of metal too. Like, oh, what? What did that go to? <gasps> oh, it is. Oh God, I thought I was done with you. Okay, that's cool. So we know these guys are are blind, but I'm guessing he's gonna walk down and then turn around. He can smell though. Oh, look at those things on his back. It's like little arms. I'll say there's nothing going on in here. It looks pretty cool though. Got like little roots and everything. He's definitely going to turn around though, so we got to be a little quick here. Oh, he's already turned around. Nothing. Must say we can't beat him. He'll he'll beat us over if we try to crawl. Ah, oh, come on. Hurry up now. We ain't got all day. He, and it's probably instant. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> excuse me, like we weren't even doing anything. We're just chilling. God, I thought I was done with you. Yeah, well, apparently he can hear us. Oh, bastard. So let's not even give him the chance. Let's wait. I don't even know how he heard us. I don't know. Don't trust him. One of those weird little legs on him is going to smell us or something. Oh, I think I hear another one. Let's see if there's anything in here. Nope. Just a dead body. Yeah, I think I hear one like above us. We should be safe, I think. Unless there's another one. And they, you know, as we saw, they can really kill us quickly. Yeah, that's where we need to go. And we're safe. Oh, he's mad. He big mad. I guess uh, if we're not crouched, he can hear us. Oh, 
Oh, I think I can hear some basic monsters in here. Oh, yeah. Now, are they still going to pop up? Because are we supposed to be, like, quiet here? Nothing. I don't know where that guy's, like, head begins. Sounds like there's one, like, right here. We could go right next to that guy. Okay, there's a box there. There might be a collectible or something that we want. I don't know, I just don't want to make a lot of noise. I feel like if we made noise, we'd be in trouble. Okay, hold on. Let's get on this side. I don't want the wall to accidentally take the brunt of this bottle. Okay, well, I was expecting him to catch a f on fire, but I, I guess not. I know it looks like they're not going to attack us. Got some health out of it. Nothing of uh, real good value. That would actually work in our favor, because all that noise would mess up the enemies here. Yeah, I know one's in here. Yeah, I'll we'll take the shovel. A hatchet. Oh, we could actually hit that wood, but I think that would really make him angry. I'm gonna say, you better move, lady. Like, we're trying to avoid this monster and look for items at the same time. Oh, yeah, we're good, though. We're safe. I don't think you can get in here, so I think we're good. There's nothing here. Yeah, well, I gotta look. I guess we can't go to the barracks. Yep. I already assumed. I was like, eh, probably gonna be blocked off by the uh, artillery. This is not bad. Kind of more of a sneaky area, but I was hoping to find some more collectibles. Oh, there's a straight up door here. Well, I mean, I'm can't complain about ammo. There's another uh, option, and that is all the dead bodies we've been seeing is her man. They're just like repeated. So all you're seeing, all the dead bodies are her soon to be husband, I guess fiance. I hate these guys. I'm guessing it's a big circle. All right, where are you going? That's right, that's what I thought. I was like, uh, is he just gonna come all the way in here? Oh, this guy's gonna take us forever. We might be better off going that way. 
But there might be some goodies. We're doing it for the goodies. And this guy's very angry. This is a new shovel if we need one. I'll take it because I don't know how how much health our shovel has. I say he should turn around. Uh, there might be. Is there an area here? There is. Oh, he's coming though. Ooh, are we gonna be quick enough? Yes, we are. It's just a breakable area. Do we break it? I think we wait. Maybe this is a different area. Maybe it's like a closed off area. If so, then we want to go here. But this might lead us being killed. No, it's just a big old... It's the same turnaround, just we would have to break it from over there. Okay. Through the pieces of metal, and we go. Yeah. I will say this, I thought they were like rare creatures, you know, there was only one throughout the whole game, but no, there's a whole bunch of them. Alright, well, we don't have to be sneaky if we don't see them. Is there one there? Now it would be scary though that if there was like real creatures like this in real life and like World War One happened, like you're fighting, you know, an enemy and also fighting these like weird creatures, like that'd be terrible. Oh my goodness, that was nasty. Like, that'd be the last thing you'd want to do. I gotta run. There's no way I can kill that thing. It's all right. We're safe. Unless you can break in here. Oh, I think you can break in here. Maybe? I'll say, I, I, we can't do anything, we're stuck. I guess that's her man over there. Oh, he got blown up. Yeah. Right, is there anything of value? Oh, game's not happy. Expeditionary forces face considerable John? losses in France. A brave men fallen on these elite John. fields will forever be oh, as John. defenders not of just Europe, but the world. What's the matter, Emily? President Woodrow Wilson spoke to our I can't do this. Widows, asking them to stand tall. What's the matter? I can't take you dying again. Speak of them proudly and remember. I'm still hurting. 
What's the matter, Emily? The war effort in Europe is not our Your death was just so... Death numbers on the home shameful. front are on the rise due to Unfair. the influenza known as the Spanish flu. The New Orleans City Council decided to open yet another emergency hospital in the old Dersetto plantation. Where is this? Where am I? So they had a hospital in Dorsetto because of the uh, Spanish flu. Emily woke to an overwhelming smell of musty earth and gluttonous thick air. Where was she? That's pretty cool, though, because there's so much information that you do not get with the detective. So this is pretty cool. Okay, that's the door we're gonna go into. Let's see if there's anything else of value. Ooh. Oh, come on. So we lost our light. I'm guessing that this door is locked. Yeah. And I guess we're finally gonna have problems with our light. All the dead bodies, all the people who died from the Spanish flu. What is going on in here? Things are floating up. Okay. Oh, come on. That's better. Somehow got it. Stuff is still floating up. Dorsetto Entombment Plans A. A set of technical drawings detailing how part of Dorsetto will be sealed off. I don't know how that works. Emily was back at Dossetto, but sealed inside a part of the basement that was no longer in use. This was clearly a mistake. Emily had confronted her trauma. She deserved her freedom to carry on with her work on the contract. This prison felt like an insult, like the dog man was cheating her. If he wasn't going to honor her progress, then she was on her own. Of all the paperwork left inside this place, there had to be some document showing her a way out. She just had to figure out what the rooms were and how they were sealed. Alrighty. You know, you would think they would have been smart and removed the bodies, but what do I know? Close in the refugee. Close in the refuge. June 17, 1919. It is with a heavy heart that I must declare the DeSeto Refuge to be harmful beyond saving. As an emergency hospital, we have over the last two years treated hundreds of patients suffering the so-called Spanish flu. Unfortunately, our mortality numbers are unforgivable. While the influenza in itself was often successfully treated, many died of fungal infections and sudden acts of violent madness. In order to dismantle the refuge safely, building engineers will survey what parts of the house are especially contaminated by the peculiar rot discovered by Jean-Baptiste Tambois. The rot is believed to be the main perpetrator in spreading the deadly fungal infection, but also the cause of the incurable madness. The most afflicted rooms will then be sealed permanently to create a cordon sanitaire. As the dead seem to exacerbate the spreading of the fungal infection, all bodies that can't be cremated by tomorrow will be forever entombed inside Dossetto's 
sealed section. The refuge was never meant to be permanent, and as the influenza epidemic seems to be in decline, it stands to reason that we shut the facility altogether. Many brave volunteers have helped for very little pay to treat those in need for almost two years, and we are forever in their debt. All surviving patients will be transferred to other medical facilities around New Orleans as soon as possible. At the end of the summer, we should be able to leave DeSeto to recover. Dr. Isaac Herbert. My goodness. So, because they didn't want to wait, like, another day to to uh, cremate other bodies, they left the bodies down here to rot. My goodness. Box of biscuits. Here we go. All the world's a stage. Secret objective. Life is a stage play performed to no one, applauded by no one, and wanted by no one. A story already written, meant to play out in one way only. I wrote my book in order to explain that there might be more to life, that free will isn't truly free unless it moves against the expected. In retrospect, I think my ambition was hubristic. Yermi had a much more humble suggestion. What if we all just went home? That's pretty simple. Give the kid something to play with. Grace without horns. And then we got some more of the plans. Alrighty. So, this is all new. We got a quarantine. The morgue. Don't know what that corner piece is. The morgue, okay. So we got the morgue there. So these are pretty easy. They kind of tell you what they are. Archives. Surgery. Laboratory is there. So we're at the. There we go. What's that? Oh, John. Visiting you because I couldn't stand the indignity of your awful illness. 
I was ashamed of you. Ashamed of myself. Forgive me. Please, John. Let me go. <laughs> Are we done here? Is this what you wanted? So her man did not die in the war. He died of you know, sickness, maybe the Spanish flu, maybe something else, but we got the key, the truth. Now we can get out. What was she seeing? Well, here, I want to look at this anyways. Toe tag. Dine with dignity. The sign resembles a blessing, save that the first and little fingers are both folded beneath the thumb. Whilst the second and third fingers are held up, this dark blessing is said to protect against evil, much like the sign of the horns, which is quite similar, but has a reverse schema. The truth is that the dark blessing is a sign of submission, a complete capitulation to our lesser selves. The sign only protects from evil in the sense that you become a part of it. Alrighty. We're getting close, though. Still missing a few. How many? We're just missing two. So a thousand young and the Heartwood Curse. So we've got a few things John to do. John Marcus died at Deceto of the Spanish flu. Emily stopped visiting him because she didn't want to see him waste away. She adopted a lie because it felt better. Emily hated the pathetic man that passed away in Deceto, but she was very proud of the man she made up, a man who died a martyr in the trenches of France. This must have been the true trauma that the dark man specified in the contract, but why was it Emily's and not Jeremy's? My goodness. Like, it was disrespectful that her man died of the Spanish flu. Like, he was pathetic because he didn't die on the front lines. I guess he never went to the war. He just got sick. It's kind of like, ugh. Alright, so this door's still locked. But all the way at the other end, we can get in over there. Kinda, I feel sad for the man. Like, damn, girl. Like, a guy can't just die. He has to, you know, die fighting or something. And we're back in here. Well, see, since we're here, we might as well search these containers once more. The lighting's a little weird in here. What's this weird noise I hear? Anyways, we are past the 30 minute mark, so we'll stop here. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links below. Next time we will give the kids something to play with, wash the paint off Jeremy's portrait, and pay Dr. Gray a visit in his apartment. So there's a couple of things we gotta do. And hopefully we are successful with that.